Hey, if you guys want to see the next video early, maybe on Friday night when you're not doing anything, join us over on Twitch.tv, where you can watch the latest video early for free, and sometimes we'll talk about other YouTube-related things. All right. Kevin, you have a lot of eggs on the table. Why? All right, I'm going to show you guys something that actually happened to me the other day, and if I didn't do the right thing, it would have been disastrous. And if this happens to you, there's a trick. And this is an important one because this could be the difference between a viable clutch of eggs that you successfully incubate and hatch versus eggs within days will actually all go bad. And I'm going to show you what happened. So the other day, I had a ball python, like this, maternally incubating a clutch of eggs. So if I open this, and you look in there, Donnie. Yeah. See that? See it. Okay, so what she did is another snake, she... Do we have a monitor in here? Yeah, I guess so. All right, turns out Dozer was inside of this container. <laughs> yeah, Dozer <laughs> hurt his lip yeah. in his cage, so his left side. Let's see if we can get this. He messed up his face, and I don't quite know what he did in his cage. He was actually outside. So a customer was nice enough to tell us that Dozer was bleeding. So I'm, this is my first time actually looking at it. it just, so it just happened. So I actually have to address this. He uh, doesn't look worse for the wear as far as his personality and how he's behaving. So uh, right now, just for the sake of this video, we'll come back to this. But we're going to let Dozer go running. Okay. The shellification of the eggs. Yeah. Did you know what we're doing is we're actually measuring the depth of the outer protection of the egg, and it's called the the measure of shellification. Yeah. Look so, it up if you don't believe us. Yes. So as this animal, I guess, was wrapped around her eggs without anybody being around, she caused one of the eggs to rupture. This was horrible. And this is a couple days ago. So I was like, wow, this is something I need to show people because this is an easy mistake that will guarantee the death of all the eggs. This is like a grease, mm -hmm. okay? Really, really nasty. It creates a grease, okay? So imagine taking a very, very viscous uh, Vaseline or, or some kind of... Uh, axle grease, right, and rubbing it all over your eggs. And what actually that's going to do, remember, this egg is a permeable membrane. So it's respirating, it's degassing, it's taking in moisture, it's letting out moisture, it's letting out CO2, it's taking in oxygen. So when you take this egg and you mire the surface with this grease from this broken egg on the other five remaining eggs, what you're doing is you suffocate the eggs. And guess what I did to fix it? probably think, well, he came in and he said, well, I'm just going to wipe it off just like that or whatever. No. What actually happens is this egg it has all these little pores. Now, I'm still, just so you believe this, it's sticky after I've, I've wiped it off. So it's actually what I'm doing is now I'm spreading around this glue and I'm leaving the glue. So what I actually needed to do, I needed to get warm water and some Dawn dishwashing detergent. And what I did, I soaked up the eggs and I used, used something with a little bit of abrasion and I was able to take the uh, soapy solution and get off all of the grease and all what actually covered the surface of the eggs. So I did it until there was no greasy feel to it or no tackiness. And it actually took, probably took about a good 10, 12 minutes to actually do this. What it did, it actually stripped away some of the calcification. So remember, this is all little dots of calcium on this egg. It's not just like one big sheet. It's all little, little dots of calcium on all these pores. So when I was washing it off, I guess for some reason, as I was taking it off, it also stripped off some of the calcium of the eggs. So these eggs are about three days old now and uh, they still look quite viable. So you can actually, I don't know if you can see it, Donnie. I can, they, you can actually see those blood yeah. vessels? Yeah, yeah, I can see everything. So those blood vessels 
are you know pretty much exactly what what we need to see so the next thing you need to do is I put them into the incubator and I wanted to dry them out so what I wanted to do is uh, the air that's moving around the incubator is drier than inside an egg container it's been three days now and these eggs over the past couple days have come back to a normal look did you know that uh, fish and game in uh, DNR uh, they'll deal with mute swans which is those big white trumpeter swans and mute swans which are invasive so what they do is they go over to their nests where they find them on ponds and they take the eggs and they oil the eggs they shellac the egg with the oil and what that's doing is suffocating the embryo so this would be the same way but we don't want to suffocate the embryo do, I mean do we make mistakes like this ever Kevin yes you personally never right uh, I have certainly made mistakes but my problem is I have other people which are everybody that is part of the nerd family and down in my retail store they often make mistakes because they don't know so maybe they'll watch this video Maybe. Okay, I'm going to show you a killer mistake that kills baby lizards yet to be born. See that egg? What's wrong with it? It's a tokay gecko egg. It could be a leopard gecko egg. It could be or two eggs. It could be ciliatus. It could be lichianus. And this is what people insist on doing, and it makes me nuts. Well, they find an egg, so one egg or two eggs, and they put it in a little thing like this. And then they go and put it. Oh, look, emerald tree skink eggs that they put in here. There was two eggs in here. They were in my incubator, and guess what I found? What? One day I just opened, oh, like, like this. I go in there, and there was dried up eggs in there. This Tokay gecko egg is going to die. Why is that? Because, remember, guys, when we incubate eggs, so critical, you have to provide available moisture. The, it's the egg's job to take that moisture as needed and use that to maintain its body mass and everything proper. When I do this, this is going to desiccate. So the dry air is going to infiltrate this container and it's going to pull the moisture and this little egg is just going to dry up. This little bit of, of media represents all the moisture for this egg and what's being infiltrated, either a little air hole or this mesh top or whatever, but it's gonna be pulled out and this is not enough content. I'm gonna show you how to do it right. This is how we can incubate all sorts of reptile eggs. So tortoise eggs, monitor eggs, gecko eggs, all that. The only thing that would be different is the size of the vessels that we're using. So in this case, for maybe some fat tail geckos, some bearded dragons, some tokays, uh, eyelash geckos, lichianus geckos, auriculatus, all these different types of, of eggs, we can do this. So what I do is I use something like, this, in this case, Hatchrite. So this is a perlite and water gel system that is of proper moisture. It's just kind of clumping together, right? So we have this vehicle. Now, maybe even that vehicle, in my opinion, might not have enough potential moisture available to this egg. We're gonna fix that. So we got the egg, we're gonna put it in here, and we're not gonna bury it. So then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a lid on that. The lid has air holes, okay? So then we're always gonna date our egg, and then what we do, we put it into another container with water, and we're going to float it. We're going to float that and what is actually happening is that egg itself is not getting wet dripped on or anything like that but it's pulling the moisture out of the substrate and the moisture inside that double container is humid and it's laden in the air so as that substrate needs any moisture it's going to pull the humidity out of the air which is constantly going to be reprovided because it's sitting in a water bath and then it makes all the proper amount of moisture available to that egg. It's always safe when you're incubating eggs to have the largest volume of substrate possible. If I incubated a ball python clutch in a trash barrel, two, three feet tall of nothing but substrate, and I put those eggs on the top, and I put glass on the top, that would be wonderful because you have this 
giant reservoir of humidity and moisture available to the eggs. Now I'm going to show you what to do when eggs are drying out. So now we have a clutch, this is ball python eggs. Now if I'm looking at my eggs, I'm going to sit here and say this is starting to be desiccated. Even though it's on a good amount of uh, available moisture, they're very close to hatching. So I want to I tell you something. So when they're in this kind of state where they're, they're kind of desiccated and they will hatch, what is the most important thing for that neonate as soon as it comes out? Water. So let's say this clutch is at day 50, right? So let's say it takes 56, 58 days, typically at my 88 to 90 degree incubation temperature. I'm gonna take these eggs out of that and I'm gonna put them on this grate and Donnie, you notice what's in here? Yeah. Like, what? There's a grate and there's a little water at the bottom? Yeah, there's water. So why are we doing that? I'm assuming you guys need the water for the water's life. So what's going to happen when the baby's it's slit good. Yeah. overnight and I'm not paying attention? It's going to moisturize, I guess. What Another are they going to do? So the little baby slits. Oh, yeah, they're going to crawl out. Comes out and it has immediate water. Oh. And I'm also, I'm just taking this water level and I can make that water level so it just starts touching the egg and that will allow the egg to wick in moisture but since we're at day 50 we're really not at a precarious time for this egg's life. If I did this at say like day 30 or something like that that might actually be a problem because constant contact to too much moisture can actually kill and cause embryonic death. And remember another thing too much moisture in that egg container where the eggs are giant, they're, they absorb as much water as possible and they're massive. They actually will swell and get bigger. That can cause embryotic death. And it is much easier to save an egg that starts to dry out than an egg that is too wet. A good rule of thumb, guys, is when I'm incubating eggs, I like my eggs to look just like this. And it's not that one. See that, Donnie? Not that one. That's a dead egg. So see if I look at something like this. Yeah. See, I got a little bit of dimpling, right? I love that. That is perfect. That is great where it's just moist enough to help it manage its moisture content, but it's not big and swollen. Like when they're first laid, they might be big and swollen. And then after a week or two, you might see a little bit of dimpling. This is really good. In a good way, if you ever feel like your eggs are getting too dry, take some long fiber New Zealand sphagnum moss and moisten it like a well wrung out washcloth. Take this container and pack it. Pack it with this well wrung out but moist moss. Pack it dense. Cover it up for like three days and come back and visit your eggs. What that's going to do, it's going to provide more moisture content if the egg actually needs it. It's going to pull it in there and it's going to equalize. I bet you this is a bad egg. Guys, very bad egg. Yeah. Should, should, okay, when you get a bad egg like that and you see it ahead of time, should you toss it? or do you Yeah, I generally do that. So one thing, if I actually have an egg like this that's obviously going bad, and I'm going to show you an earlier stage egg going bad. Here, this is a short tail python clutch, and this is a very marginal clutch. So an egg like this, you can have an emotional attachment to it, but it's not going to help you. But this egg being in a bin where it can touch a nice viable egg like that is only going to be potentially uh, life threatening and damaging. I don't want them to touch. We get uh, different pseudomonas, we get mold, we get fungi, you get a lot of nasty things, but you really, a bad egg can bring down good eggs, and especially if the egg is moist. This is obviously a bad egg. This egg is desiccated. For what reason? I don't exactly know. Because in my uh, opinion, it had enough available moisture. But sometimes things go wrong and that's just the luck of the draw. We are breeding animals and they do things. You want to be cool and do some peeking in eggs at the end. So let's say you can't wait the, the five days that you really need to. See I do this? You know what I do next, Donnie? You see how these people are cutting in these eggs and just cutting the whole top off and stuff? Mm -hmm. That's not artful. What I do, I look in the egg. Oh, you do it right there. Interesting. There's no blood vessels, guys. See that? That's what they're not doing. I will go in there 
and I will take forceps and I will poke in there and spread it open and then tear away and shave. I'll drain a little bit of the albumin and I'll leave a little air pocket so as the neonate is inside there, it can find uh, quick access to oxygen. So we shut the lights out, we candled, and we looked for blood vessels. So if we have like a rolled out egg, and I want to get the proper orientation of that because that can actually allow the embryo to continue to develop or it can tear free and it's in the improper position and that sometimes that embryo dies. So what I'm doing is I turn the egg if it's a rolled out egg and I'm looking where all sorts of vascularization, all the blood vessels are, and you want to find like a little pink circle. If you do find that, or what you think is that, you want to put that straight up at 12 o'clock. And then you're going to incubate that like the rest. I would recommend don't have that egg touching your other eggs until you're sure that it's good. Because uh, three or four days later, it could go bad. It could turn green with uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is highly contagious. It's generally, it's uh, common in a lot of snakes. And that bacteria can attack that egg. And what happens is, that egg becomes a reserve for billions and billions and billions of other bacteria that are opportunistic. So they'll attack healthy eggs and sometimes kill them. We do our videos Saturday morning and I try to go and answer your questions and there's so many cool things I like to see. You guys are really, really kind. But I do want to share this stuff with you. I want to make you a better keeper, better for the community because we all are like an eclectic family. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!